So first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a vertical line down the center. Picture as if you had a portrait, right? That center line goes down the middle of our faces. The middle of our faces, this is the center of our face, right? In between the eyes. So that line is going to go through between the center of the face, the uh, center of the nose, and the center of the lips and the center of the chin. That is what that first vertical line that we're about to make is going to symbolize. Now, you want to try and do it in the center of the page or as close to the center. I'm not even going to measure it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So again, trick, I'm going to put my ruler or if you have a book at home, line it up with the bottom edge of your paper, right? So it's nice and straight and I'll just make the line. Don't make it too dark. We will be erasing it at the end. So again, vertical line, try and make it as straight as you can and try and get it in the center if you can. Now, if you look at my paper, the line is slightly to the left, just a little bit, but it's not a big deal. And it just means that our, my person's head is going to be shifted over to the left a little bit. Okay. All right. The next line we're going to make is going to be a horizontal line that goes straight across. And that line, if we were to have a face on there is going to go through our person's eyes or the center of our person's eyes, right? That imaginary line going through is what we're creating now. So that, that doesn't necessarily have to go in the center of the paper, right? We can put it up a little higher. That way you have enough room for the nose, the mouth, the chin, right? That's why I'm gonna put it just a little higher, but the same thing, make sure that it's straight across and I'm just putting it just a little bit above the center of the paper, All right? So the center of my paper is roughly, or half is roughly here, right? So I just put it up a little higher, okay? So where these two lines meet is the center of our person or is going to be the center of our person's face right right in there so that's where this is at okay so we start off with the eyes okay the length of the eye so we're going to use the pencil so you no longer need the ruler anymore or the, sh the straight edge we just needed it for those two um, everything else I'm going to measure, I'm going to measure with my, uh, pencil, just like we did at first semester where I line up with the end of the, the eraser. And then I put my thumb wherever I want. Okay. Now here's what we're going to do. I want you to now figure out how wide do you want your person's eyes to be, right? I'm not going to make them this long. I'm actually going to make them about this long. And you may think, well, that looks pretty small. It's not, it's pretty good in terms of the size. So I'm gonna start, if you have a pencil at home that has these metal erasers on the, the tips of it like that, I'm just gonna pinch a little past that, right? This is how wide I'm making my person's uh, eyes, okay? So now, remember how we said the breakdown, the person's eyes, well, you can get about five eyes across their face. Let me see if I have that, that picture, that's fine. So measuring this, right? So if you think about it, it's two of these metal things. If you want to get like a, a measurement, right? So this is the halfway mark. Now it'll help if you have two pencils. If you don't, I'm just going to use one, right? So this is where the right eye is going to start right in here. And this is where the left eye is going to start, right? So I want you to put two marks, one here and one here on your paper, okay? One on the right where the eraser ends and one on the left where your fingers are pinching your uh, pencil, all right? Now, if we did this correctly, these should be evenly spaced out. But are they spaced evenly spaced out right now? These two. Are they? 
No, right? This is shorter than this. They need to be the same, right? So that means I need to shift over one or the other. Um, I'm going to shift. I'm going to go more like here. So let me erase these little marks. So it should be closer to here. So this is where you should also be checking. That's more balanced than even, all right? So just make sure that wherever you put those marks, that they are the equal distance to that center line, okay? All right, so now every single eye that we are gonna be talking about is going to be this length, right? And everything I say will be in reference to the eyes. Okay, so now we're gonna add more marks, right? So that's that center eye that, remember how I said, we should be able to fit one eye in between the two eyes that we have, right? So that's that center eye, this space here. Now we're gonna go over to the right side. Remember, using the pencil as like your ruler, I'm gonna line up my eraser with that mark on the right, pinch where I have that mark on the left, move my pencil over to the right, and make a mark right here at the end of the pencil eraser, okay? And then I'm gonna make one more over here. Right. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the left side. I'm still pinching my pencil for measurement wise. Line it up, lining up my eraser with that mark on the left and then putting a mark where my fingers are pinching. And now we're gonna do the same thing one more time over here. So you should have one, two, three, four, five, six marks, okay? Along that line, they should all be evenly spaced apart, okay? Now, if you make these spaces really small, your person's eyes will be really small and therefore the size of their head will be small. If you made these marks really spread out and they go all the way to the end of your paper or sides of your paper, that means your person's head is gonna be big. But it's okay. If you have big eye, if your person has big eyes, then they should have a big head and everything will be in proportion. Okay, so keep that in mind. So here, the first mark on the left and the last mark on the right, these are going to be the sides of our person's face, okay? All right, now we're ready to draw the eyes or the shape of the eyes. So the shape of everyone's eyes are like almonds, a basketball, or not a basketball, a, a football, right? Because it's not a perfect circle. Our eyes have an uh, almond shape, if you will, okay? Now, I start, watch how I do this first eye. I start below the line and I go over and create that arch like this, okay? And then I do the same thing underneath, over or and under and create the curve, okay? That center line should be in the middle of your person's eye. Okay. If you make it too tall, again, you wanna try and just have a, an average size uh, looking eye. Right? Everything that we're making today is just kind of generic or average, nothing um, too extreme. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Start. I start at the inside corner and then I just, Go and make the curve. And obviously you want them to be the same height so that they look symmetrical. So our person's face looks symmetrical. Okay. And then same thing below, start on the inside corner, cross and up. And again, make sure that they're both the same uh, length going down or curve going down. If one looks like it dips down more than the other, then adjust it. 
For example, I think I need to make this one a little further down. So I'm going to reshape it a little bit. Okay. All right. Oh, make sure that uh, I didn't. I mentioned this with the vertical line, but not the horizontal line. Make that horizontal line not too dark, because we will be erasing the horizontal line and that vertical line. Right? Okay. So we have the shape of the outside shape of our eyes. Now we're ready to start to go into the center. Okay. Remember how we talked about the iris, where we have the colors on our eyes. Right, and then inside we have that little tiny dot, or not tiny, but um, black solid circle, which is our pupil. I'm gonna zoom in on the eyes because we're gonna start to do the details on the eyes, okay? So our person is just looking straight, nothing out of the ordinary. And so what I tend to do for the iris, remember how we can't see, we shouldn't be able to see the bottom or the top of the iris. I go ahead and make this curve that connects the top to the bottom, and then I do another one on this side. Okay. And do the same thing on the right side. I just draw a curve connecting the top arc and the bottom one, and then go to the other side here. All right. So again, this is the iris. And remember, we don't want it to look like, where's that thing I drew last time? We don't want it to look like this. So your eyes should not look like, your person's eyes should not look like this, right? We shouldn't be able to see the bottom of the iris or the top. This is how our eyes look when a person has relaxed gaze. Well, it's, it's a common thing, Donovan. That's why I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna repeat things that I feel uh, or that I've seen people do co on a common basis, just because that's what people are used to and they haven't really paid attention to things before. So it's fine. That's why I'm gonna just be reminding people about that. All right. So we have the iris, right? We have the shape of our eye. Now let's go ahead and draw the pupil. So that pupil is that circle, that black circle that we have in the center of our eyes, all right? And that we're gonna fill in solid black. Everyone has this solid black, unless you have some sort of a, an eye condition. All right. all right, now, if you've ever looked at photographs or a magazine, you'll notice that we typically always have a reflection or two on our eyes. Here's an example. So if you look at his eyes, he's got two. One, two. One, two. That means when they took the photograph, there were two lights, one on the left side and one on the right, which is why they show up in his eye or both eyes. We're just going to make a simple one. Typically, on average, you'll see a reflection on the top of a person's eye, and it looks like it's like a curved rectangle okay so a curved rectangle on both eyes typically it's just above the pupil right and again that's usually um from a light that was in the room wherever they took the picture right I'm going to erase that center line going through the eye right now, or both eyes. because so we're about to start adding more details and I don't want those lines to get in the way. Huh? So right now, our person's face kind of looks like a mask, right? Flat eyes, and we're gonna slowly build and give it more detail and make it look like it's more 3D. Right. Okay, the iris, the color of our person's eyes, <clears throat> depending on what color your person has in terms of their eyes, right? I have the nice, beautiful, dookie brown eyes. 
So my iris is pretty dark. Typically it's darker at the top because there's a shadow from the eyelashes. So we're gonna make, I'm just gonna lightly shade around that hot spot or that reflection and make the top of this eye or iris a little darker. And as I go down towards the bottom of the eye, I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to darken it just a little bit towards the bottom. Because as it gets to the bottom, if you look at his eye, it gets a little darker. So it's lightest inside the center part of the iris. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye. Darker at the top, where that upper eyelid is at. Lighter in the center towards the pupil. And just a little darker towards the bottom. Now for this that we're doing today, I definitely want us to focus more on the proportions, not so much on the um, shading. So I want everyone to really understand where things go first. And then we can worry about that, the shading. All right, so let me zoom out so you can kind of see. So it's starting to get some volume into our eyes. That left eye looks better than my person's right eye. And it's because of that hot spot that I got rid of. I'm gonna make it a little bigger, all right? People online, is this okay in terms of speed? Am I going too fast, too slow? Okay. Thank you, Don. Um, all right, let's go ahead and start doing the eyelids and the corners. Now, the corners of our eyes. Do you guys ever notice that in the inside corner of our eyes, we have this little piece of like pink meat in here? Everyone has that right in here. So when you cry, right, because you, A, your mom or your dad hit you or you're just on something, you did something wrong, right? and you cry, tears coming out of your eyes and they go down to your nose, right? And your nose gets all runny, right? Like when my mom hit me, would hit me with a wooden spoon because I would talk back and I deserved it. Uh, you cry, right? And you like do the sniffles because our tears drain out of these little corners. They drain, so go, all I'm gonna do is just here, all I do is just a little curve on the inside corner. There is a little canal there, a little tiny hole that spills and leaks into our noses. So when we cry, that's how our eyes drain. Our eyes drain any fluid or any liquid down to our uh, noses. And that's why we get a runny nose when we cry, right? Yes, Melanie, I did talk back to my mom. I wasn't the greatest son growing up, but I'm definitely making up for it now. So again, there's a little, just a little piece of meat right there inside corner that everyone has. All right. All right, now let's go ahead and we're gonna work on the um, eyelids now. So we have the little piece of meat on the inside corners for both eyes, right? We don't have it on the outside corners, right? So eyel or eyelids, we typically will have a little crease right above the top of our eye. And all it does is just mimics the curve of our eyelid. So you're just gonna draw a little curve right above the upper eye. Now, if we look at the photo that I have, his crease is different. His crease is more on the inside. Now he is older, so he'll probably have more wrinkles, more creases, right? 
on average, people have the crease just right above the eye, okay? And we always have it when our eyes are open. The only time that crease or those wrinkles are not there above the eye is when our eyes are closed, right? Okay, lower eyelid. If you look at his lower eyelid, you'll notice that it has some thickness to it, right? The lower one does. The upper one doesn't have that because we're looking kind of down at his eyelids a little bit and they're opening so they're, you can see more of it. So what we're gonna do, if you notice too, it starts off really thin on the inside corner and then it gets thicker in the center and then it thins out again. So all I'm gonna do is go from this inside corner, just make it a little thicker here in the center and then bring it back in towards the outside corner. And again, this is the lower eyelid. This is the thickness of that lower eyelid. And you do the same thing on the other side. Start on the inside corner, hug the inside corner. And as you go to the center of the eye, you break away from the lower eyelid and then you go up again. Okay. So we should be seeing our eyes slowly coming to life. <clears throat> Eyelashes. We can't count how many eyelashes we see on his eye, right? So a lot of times people will be like, okay, let me go ahead and draw one, two, three, four, five, ten, or they'll draw a lot. We don't have a lot of eyelashes on the lower eyelid. We have more on the above on the upper eyelid. Okay. And some people have more and some people have thinner eyelashes. What you don't want to do is this instant thing that people do sometimes is that. Okay. No one has, has eyelashes like that. No human person has eyelashes like that that are natural. Right? So they tend to be really small and really faint. And they curve out just a little bit. And so I'm doing, they almost sometimes just look like little specks. If you look at his eyelashes, they look like little specks. Right? So that's what you're drawing. Remember, we are, when you're drawing your own portrait later on, you're drawing what you see in your picture. So if they have little speck eyelashes, then that's what you draw. Okay. Um, <clears throat> notice how his eyelashes, they're more clumped together here in the center and more spread out towards the sides. All right, let's go ahead and do the upper eyelashes now. So if you look um, on his, it just looks like a dark, uh, thicker line up here. And then you see every now and then a little specks of eyelashes like on this eye. You'll see a little bit more. So you see that little speck there, but you never see a clear defined eyelash there. So all I'm gonna do on mine is go to the top line for the eyelash or the eyelid and just make it thicker. We'll start off with that. And it'll come down a little bit more into this, the iris. Okay, so all I'm doing is making that upper eyelid look like it's thicker by making a, a darker line and thicker line. Sorry, yeah, let me know if it ever gets out of focus because I'm zoomed in. Okay, now let's say you did want to put, like let's say your person has eyelashes and they're, they're visible on their picture, but they're not visible on this one, right? So typically here's what they do or what the, our eyelashes do. Natural eyelashes do not look like this, okay? That's kind of like what a doll would have as an eyelash or eyelashes, okay? Even prosthetic eyelashes don't look like that. They look obviously um, out of the ordinary, right? So eyelashes, they curve out, right? And they start looking really small or really thin here. And as they go to the outside of the eye, they curve up like this. Right? 
So if you want your person to have eyelashes like that, by all means, go ahead and do it. And then the other side, same thing. It starts really short here. And then as it goes to the outside, they curve out more. All right. So I will let you choose which type of eyelashes you want your person to have. If you want them to have more well-defined eyelashes, put them on. If you want it just to be like mine where the, the eyelashes kind of blend in with the upper eyelid, by all means do that as well. Okay. All right. Now we're ready to shade the inside of the eyes. So people think, oh, the white, the inside of their eyes are just white. We don't need to do anything. Well, yes, maybe closer to the iris, but not the sides. So if you look, the outside corner is not solid white. Same thing on this side, it's shaded. So typically the corners of the whites of people's eyes are have a little value in it. So I'm just gonna lightly shade the corner, the outside corners of our person's eyes. And then I'm gonna put just a little bit of value on the inside corner here, just a little bit. And this should help make your person's eyes look more rounded. All right, now ready for underneath the eyes. Underneath we, the eyes, we usually have another line. It's not as defined as the top one that we made earlier, right? This is where the bags, quote unquote, of our eyes are, right? Now, some people have more defined lines than, we, than this, right? Reason why we get those bags underneath our eyes, as some of you may already know, is because you're not getting sleep, right? You're not getting, uh, you're too tired. And there's a reason for that. Your eyes have muscles, right? They work 20 uh, during the day to help keep your eyes open. We have four muscles, one, two, three, four. They help make your eye move in all different directions. But if your eyes are open for a really long time, those muscles are working hard and they're not resting. They only rest when you're sleeping, right? So when you're not resting, and you've been working too much or your eyes have been working too much, these will get inflamed and they'll swell up and that's how you get those bags, all right? So I went ahead and I just lightly shaded underneath the eye here. Just a little bit. Don't do it too much. If you do it too much, you might make it look like your person has a uh, a black eye or black so black eyes. So you see how it's slowly starting to come to life, right? All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we typically have these little curves on the outside of our eyes. Now, I have them more than you because I'm older, right? So the older you get, the more these defined creases you have. I'm not gonna make it too defined, a little bit. Again, just to show that the our eyelids, our person's eyelids are into inside of their skull. And now I'm gonna erase where these two lines meet or cross on the inside corner. Same thing on this side. And I'm just going to shade just a little bit above the upper eyelid, just lightly. And again, this is going to help make your person's eyes look a little more 3D because we're adding value. Okay. I'm going to make that line a little more defined because I just kind of blended it. Now we're ready for eyebrows. Okay, going back to the measurement, take your pencil, measure the width of one of your person's eyes. So starting from inside corner, put your eraser there, and then you're gonna pinch where the inside or the outside corner is. 
right? And this is where it gets a little tricky. We're using this to measure where our, our person's eyebrow will be, okay? So watch how I do this because this is, sometimes people get confused with this. So line up my pencil inside corner, pinch where the outside is at, and then I'm gonna rotate my pencil and line up the bottom of my eraser to the bottom of the lower eyelid. And where I'm pinching up here, I'm gonna make a mark. Okay. You can do the same thing for the other eyes. So make a mark here. So this is from the bottom of the eye to the top here is one eye length away. Okay. Again, take your pencil, measure the length of the eye with the pencil, pinch. Matt, make sure you're watching this so you know how to do this. And then rotate the pencil, line it up with the bottom eraser, with the eraser at the bottom. And then where you pinch is where you make the mark. You can do that for both eyes. And you may say, well, that looks really high for eyebrows. Wait a minute. Just put those two marks. Our person's eyebrows are not going to start right there. These two marks are the highest points of our person, are going to be the highest points of our person's eyebrows. So let me put that into perspective. This point here, this mark here, is not the bottom of the eyebrow. It is going to be the top of the eyebrow. Okay? All right. Now, you get to choose what kind of eyebrows you want to give your person. On average, Eyebrows start about here and look how far out they end. Now, guys' eyebrows are different than girls' eyebrows. We tend to have thicker eyebrows. Like, I have some pretty thick eyebrows, right? And I have to thin them out every now and then. So it's up to you how thin or how thick you want them to be and how arched you want them to be. I'm going to make a generic shape. So the first thing I do is just make the shape of the eyebrow that I want my person to have. Right. And now you do the same thing. And hopefully they look the same, the left one and the right one. So I start by making the arch first, the top one. And then I go ahead and make the bottom part. And when you make them, try and make them as close to the, make both of them look as uh, similar as you possibly can. Right. So get the shape the same for both. And then eyebrows are just made up of hair, right? And hair is just lines. So watch how I'm going to fill in my person's eyebrows without having to erase the shape, okay? So I'm gonna make kind of like bushy eyebrows just because A, they're pretty thick here. I made fairly thick eyebrows. All I'm gonna do is do this. Typically eyebrows, tend to move from the side and out to the left on this, right? Sometimes in here in the center, they some stick out, right? Mine kind of sometimes do that. And notice how that shape just kind of disappeared because what I did was just fill it in with those lines. So the shape of the eyebrow that I drew is kind of just like a guide. I think this one's a little too big compared to the one on the left. So I'm going to thin it out a bit so they look similar. Okay. 
So now we have eyes, eyebrows, and now we can move to the nose. <laughs> 